Good afternoon, friend. Welcome to a new episode of the Erin Chase Show. We're going to be talking about knives, and I'm going to be teaching how to cut a couple of different pieces of produce um, because I love to teach uh, you how to cook. And so that's what we're talking about today. Uh, this is a just a little uh, little cooking tutorial, if you will, a little lesson in in cutting. Hopefully, it's really helpful. I'm going to teach you how to cut a bell pepper. I have a secret trick and hack for that. I'm also going to teach you how to cut an onion, at least the way I do it. I know there's a number of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you my way. And I'm also going to show you how to julienne a zucchini. I have a really fabulous recipe. I'll put it in the comments um, when we're finished. I should have thought to grab that before we um, started. And also talk about different knives that you need. I know this is the holiday season. I feel like a good knife is something that should be on your list if it needs to be. If you don't have a good set of knives, it's definitely something to um, consider adding to your list. It's not too late. I know I'm still deciding. I'm not even sure what is on my list this year. I don't know. Um, so anyways, we'll see. I, I think um, I'm, I have some ideas, but I haven't actually made my official list for myself. And I think this year I'm going to actually see if maybe my husband would get the thing instead of me buying it for myself. Do you do that? Do you buy gifts for yourself? Okay. I want to know what your favorite knife is. I know we all have a favorite burner on the stovetop. For me, that's this one right here. I want to know your favorite knife. For me, it's this one. We're going to switch camera views. I'm going to talk about the different knives and what they do. And I'm also going to teach you how to cut a couple of these things. So here we go. So we are going to cut bell pepper, zucchini, and onion today. And I just want to do a quick rundown of these knives and teach you a little bit about how to select a knife um, and something that you need to look for in the way that the knife, the way that you hold the knife, really. And then, uh, yeah, show you how to cut. So this is a chef's knife. I'm actually going to switch the camera view back this way. And when you're looking for a knife, you want it to do this. You want the knife to balance perfectly where the weight of the handle matches the weight of the blade and it's going to balance when you put your finger in this notch right here. Um, so that's the first thing you want to be looking for. Um, and I just rinsed these off so I didn't clean them thoroughly because I used them earlier. And then when you're going to hold this knife, you're going to want to hold on the blade here and put your middle finger middle finger in that notch. And then I really didn't clean this very well. I just used it. So I didn't rinse it off very well. Um, and then you're going to hold the blade here and you can see there's plenty of space for your fingers to clear when you're doing the cutting motions. Okay. If you're like, Oh my gosh, I just came across this video. She's holding up a knife. Okay. I know we're cutting things. All right. So that's a chef's knife. Again, you want it to balance well. And, and most, or I should say all chef's knives have a, a really high clearance here to be doing a lot of that rocking motion. This is a utility knife or a carving knife. It's not going to have exactly the same balance, but the handle should be a little bit heavier than the blade. The blade is just smaller. Um, this handle is still heavy. We want that heavier handle so that we can, so that the handle and the weight of the handle helps with gravity as, as you're cutting as well. So this one, you're gonna hold up again like that. There's not as much clearance there. So you probably wouldn't use it for fast chopping and rocking, but you might be using it in more like carving-ish circular motions. Okay, and then a paring knife. <laughs> this one is also smaller. Um, this one is the fine motor knife, if you will. This is the one you're digging out strawberry stems or holes. Um, you're gonna be using a smaller knife to slice through a grape tomato or something like that. So I just wanted to feature and explain those kind of three main knives. If you don't have a chef's knife, a utility or carving knife or a paring knife, these are the three that I use all the time. I have a couple of other ones, but I, you know, a bread knife, a serrated bread knife, that's going to, you know, cut through loaf of bread really easily. The teeth on the serrated blade is going to help um, slice through that, the softer bread easier. But anyways, these are the three crucial ones that I think every kitchen should have. So if you need to grab one, add it to your holiday list to go ahead and do that. All right, let's start with the bell pepper. I am going to use the carving knife for the bell pepper the chef's knife for the onion and the paring knife for cutting the little strips of the zucchini. So how to cut a bell pepper. Here's my trick for you. So bell peppers can make a massive mess. 
If you've never cut a bell pepper before, you're like, what is she talking about? My bell peppers do not make a mess. Okay, that's because you've never cut one before. So what often happens, if I cut the bell pepper through here, I'm just going to show you what's going to happen because I have another one here. All right, so a lot of people cut the bell pepper through here. And that's great, but then you have to dig and start picking out of here. And oftentimes, um, what will happen is the this one doesn't have too many seeds. You can't really see in there very well, but the seeds will spill out all over the place. Okay, so then you can you know you can cut around the top like this. You can get the pieces that you need, and then you can kind of dig around here. This is how most people I feel like cut, and then you end up with seeds all over the place and this is what happens. You can see, this is the scenario. Number one. Okay. This is not the way to cut bell pepper. Okay. I am suggesting not to cut it that way. I'm going to give you an alternative that is going to, you might get a few stray seeds here and there. A lot of times I have zero stray seeds, which is really the best what we're looking for. Um, so what you do, so that is not the way to cut a bell pepper. I suggest not cutting off the top like that. All right. If you're just joining, do not do it that way. Instead, do it this way. So I need to wash this one. I didn't wash this one earlier. Hang on. I already washed everything else earlier. Please hold. Please hold while I access your account. Okay. No, just kidding. Um, please, please hold. I'm right here. All right. So this is what we're going to do. With the bell pepper, you're going to take the blade and you're going to find one of these, a notch here and a notch here. You see the two notches? So you're going to line your blade up like that, okay? Let me see if that'll focus. It's too close. Okay, so this is the idea. So when you line your blade up notch to notch, is what I say, and you slice down, look at what happens. You get this beautiful thing. You most likely will not hit the seeds. No seeds so far. So now that I can either see inside or I can move to, towards the next notch, I can go next notch to next notch, and look at what happens you end up cutting out the pith in the core. Hit me up with some hearts if you're like, what is happening? I never knew that. I'm never, this is changing my life, okay? So then you just move to the next notch. This was kind of a big notch, so I did get a couple seeds there. That's fine. Most of the time, this works really well. So we, and then you can't predict when the seeds are gonna be loose, but this is a little bit easier. And then you end up, cutting out the last part, and then you can cut off any pieces from the bottom that you want, that you want to, you know, keep for your deal. Look at, I got a seed and one on the knife. Ha, huh. amazing. That's, that's the trick, notch to notch, and then you end up, oh, there's some more. Again, you can't predict the loose seeds inside, but you can reduce the mess, and that's how I reduce the mess. So you cut notch to notch, and then from here, you can cut as you wish. You can either cut it this way, you can flip it over and, oh, another one, I cut it this way. I prefer not to do that. I feel like the knife, even this knife is actually sharp also. I feel like the knife actually cuts through the flesh side uh, easier than the skin side. So if you need to do strips, you just cut it into strips, right? Make sure you're holding your fingers, your knuckles parallel uh, to the blade so that you keep your fingers safe, right? So you can then slice from there. If you wanted larger pieces for kebabs, you just kind of cut them into thirds and you've got larger pieces for kebabs or a stir fry. So really um, easy options here for cutting the bell pepper. But I wanted to teach you that notch to notch trick because I think that that's really, um, just makes it really easy for cleanup. There's like, what, I had two or three stray seeds. Um, and oftentimes, again, there are zero stray seeds. It really depends on how ripe the bell pepper is and if any, um, you know, how loose the seeds are inside. Of course, you could lop off the top, but I prefer this notch to notch method. Um, okay, next, onion. I'm gonna switch over to the chef's knife. Uh, onions, I feel like these can be cut a number of different ways. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. A lot of people will leave the root on. Um, I prefer not to do that. So the idea there is you slice off the top and then you can peel the uh, you can you can cut an edge like in the side and then peel back all of the paper layer. Uh, sometimes you have to peel two and three layers deep depending on how dry the top of the onion is and how much of that paper layer is. I personally prefer to cut off both ends. Um, it makes the peeling of the paper layer a little bit easier to peel off sideways. 
mixed and peeling sideways. And then I have the full onion to use. I don't have to like cut towards the end and get to the end and I can't grip it anymore. That's just my personal preference. I know there's other ways to cut an onion, but I lop off both sides, peel the paper layer back. And then from here, we can do a number of things. From here, we can, I, I usually cut it in half this way. Um, that would be, is it latitude or longitude? You guys, I think I missed that day in, in history class for third grade history. Uh, can't remember. Not the equator, the other way. Cut it down the other way. And then now you have two halves that you can work with. So from here, we can cut into half moons. We can chop. We can dice. Um, so there's a number of different options that you can do uh, for cutting your... Um, Onion. So let's do dice really quick. So if I was going to dice this for like kebabs or maybe a stir fry, I'm just going to cut it in half this way and then probably two slices this way. And then I've got kind of these larger, I guess in multi different sizes of, of onion here, but larger pieces that I could then use for kebabs or for, uh, you know, a stir fry or even a, a chunky, a chunky chili of sorts. So that's one way. So with the other half, you can also just cut it into like half moons. This is how I generally cut if I'm doing like a caramelized onion. You just take these half moons and toss them in a skillet with some oil and uh, either white sugar or brown sugar. And then from there, if you want strips, you could also use these as strips or cut these in half. Uh, you could do, you know, smaller strips like this big if you wanted to do that. And then, of course, if you were going to chop, then I would just run my knife down this way to then get those smaller pieces. So there's like four ways to get different uh, onion sizes, but I like to cut the, the top and root off of the onion, peel the paper back. And then from there, I have all of these easy ways to get the different sizes of onions that, that I might be using for whatever it is that I'm cooking. All right. Last. So I use the chef's knife for that one. I like the chef's knife because it's bigger. It's easier to control. Well, I don't want to say easier to control. It's a different type of control. And I like that the heavier handle gives you a good opportunity for like the rocking motion that you need for chopping an onion. Um, I also use the chef's knife for bigger fruits, um, making big wide cuts for like peeling off the cantaloupe skin or pineapple, things like that. Um, all right, moving on to the zucchini. I want to cut this into tiny little strips. I like to have the smaller strips sauteed that I can saute with a little oil, toss with a little bit of um, a little bit of pasta, maybe. So this is like a julienne look. Uh, I used to julienne carrots, so now they sell them that way. So it's way more convenient, not any more expensive to buy a bag of already julienne carrot. So I, I wanted to feature this cutting method for with the zucchini. Um, one, because zucchini is soft. Um, and two, because it's just a cool method. So to do the julienne, we just need to cut it. That basically just means cut it into strips. And so depending on the size of the zucchini, I might do this into thirds. So you could do half will be a really a much longer strip. We might want to do a third. So I'm going to probably do thirds here. And again, I'm using the paring knife because it's a little bit easier to control fine motor wise. Um, so I'll just, yeah, I want the, the finer little cuts. I want really thin strips. That's why I'm going to use this knife. Uh, so from here, so I'm going to move some of these onions over so you can see a little better. So from here, I cut it into thirds. I'm going to cut down, down the middle because I want to they don't need to be perfectly even, um, but we want them to be even. You need to move slowly and you need to be very careful with your hand placement so that you don't, because um, we're cutting very close here. So from here, I'm gonna then probably make two sl sl slices down this side and then two slices down this side, okay? You don't have to keep it together. I'm just kind of keeping it together for the video. I'm gonna set this little batch aside and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna do a slice down and then another slice down. So now I have basically three layers smushed together and then the same thing over here, three layers together. Now I can lay them down flat on the flesh side and then slice through probably four, maybe five times. One, two, 
again, move slowly and, and very carefully. The skin, this is a little bit wet. Um, and then we have that little batch is julienned just like that. So we got the little strips. These will shrink a little bit as you cook them. They'll release a little liquid, if you, especially if you're sauteing them, um, you know, tossing with some pasta or something like that. So let me just finish this guy, and then I'll do a quick recap of what we've been talking about here. So you can see we have bell peppers, onions, and zucchini all cut like this. Um, so that's that. Just a quick little tutorial um, for you. I'll finish cutting those after the vac just to keep this short and sweet. So we used, we talked about the three, these three different types of knives. There are other knives, but I think these are the most useful for any kitchen. Uh, we have the chef's knife, which is the larger one over here. And I use that to cut the onion. We cut the onion, the top and the bottom root off of the onion. And then we peeled the paper layers back. And then from there, I showed you how to get the larger diced pieces, the kind of the half moons and the strips, and then the, the, the finer chopped pieces as well. That's why I like cutting in that way where we cut off the top and bottom and then get two halves. And then you can, from there, really any of these three sizes are easy to get from your onion. We also talked about, or I used the carving or utility knife to cut the bell pepper, teaching uh, how to kind of cut in the notch to notch uh, way to then cut out essentially you you end up with the the edges of the bell pepper and you keep the core and the seeds and the pith all together as a unit and it's just a little bit less messy um, than if you were to lop off the top or cut it kind of randomly cut into it not knowing what you were going to get on the inside <laughs> and then from there once we got those bigger pieces you can cut it into larger pieces for kebabs of course strips if you were going to do like a pepper stir fry uh, or into smaller pieces that you would then, you you know, add these to like a chili or something like that, or a stew. And then last, I use the paring knife, which is the smaller knife that you see there. That um, is the one you can, you just need to have a little bit more fine motor control uh, for, you know, cutting out the stems of a, or the hull of a strawberry, or in this case, cutting these zucchini into little strips, kind of that julienne style that we can then um, use for in our cooking. So that is the recap of what we have for this week's Aaron Chase show, just all about knives and cutting 101, basically. That's the, uh, that is the gist of that. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday, I believe in the afternoon for the Dinner Made Easy show. We're gonna prep dinner together as we do on Thursdays. And then next week for the Aaron Shea show, I have a homemade sauce and seasoning that I can't wait to share with you. So I hope you have a fabulous rest of your Tuesday. And I look forward to seeing you on future episodes of the Aaron Chase show and the Dinner Made Easy show. Bye for now, friend.